Julius Randle, during that game, yeah, he did give a thumbs down, right, in the fourth quarter. I was wondering what that was about. And then he tells the media he was telling the MSG crowd to shut the family show up. You want to call him trash, you want to call him this, you want to call him that. You don't think that he hears those things? You don't think that in MSG he hears the names people are calling him? You don't think he's scrolling through timelines and seeing what people are saying about him? If, you know, New Yorkers pride themselves on, we pride ourselves on being gully and being, you know, just outspoken and in your face. And if you can't handle it, then get out of my way. Like, so keep that same energy. He's just giving you what you've given him. So but if you don't want to be, if you don't want the smoke, then don't get the smoke. That's really what it comes down to. If, you're, if you're in your feelings if, about it, then there's a reason for it. That's all I'm saying. But, however, we don't boo you if, if, if you if you giving your, your all. We we booing you if you if you if you playing lazy, if if you're not playing up to your potential, if you're spinning around turning the ball over when you should be giving it up to your point guard, we I don't we don't boo you for though, no reason. You're not helping the team get their morale up to go ahead and go on a run like we saw. You know, people underestimate what cheers do. People underestimate what support from the crowd does. That's what the whole concept of home court advantage is. One, because you're familiar with the court, but two, the fans are there to support you. If you're going to be do. out there booing them all the time, we then do. what the hell am I playing at home for? But you, you got to earn it. You got to earn it. What, what, do you, what do you think? What do you think when, when, when he's on the free throw line last year, third quarter, they're chanting MVP, MVP, right? Because he's putting in work. He's putting I'm, in work. I'm not, I'm not discrediting. I'm not, da- I'm not arguing the fact that booing is part of the nature of the beast of, of bath and competitive sports in general. Yeah. And simply saying that there is a level to it to where it's no longer, okay, we're booing because you're not putting and we want you to work harder. And you're booing just being obnoxious and you're not helping what's happening on the court. And also, like, if you don't think that players are scrolling Nick's Twitter and seeing but that, what's but being that's said their about problem. Them, totally you gotta you gotta stay stuff. off the you gotta stay off of it. Those people first of all, the, the game there was a two point game at that point when he did the thumbs down thing. To me, that's one or two people probably in his ear. Because I didn't even hear the boos like that. I didn't hear the booze like that at I 94, them, 92. Again, I wasn't there. I don't know if it was louder in the garden than it was on TV. To, so. to me, and I'm not there. I'll, I'm going to hit up my guy that was there. At 94, 92, that seems like it's, it's probably one person that's getting under his skin. That Because it happened in the Pacer game. It definitely happened in the Pacer game. Where he was going at somebody that was sitting on, on, on court side. But, like, you, you can't... The, to me, they're sensitive because... The vast majority of the fans are not going at him personally, are not enjoying the fact that he has COVID. You know, the vast majority of fans are understanding who he is as a player and the limitations that come with it, but we still want excellence. What differentiates then when you are playing at home if then you have to worry about getting booed constantly if you sneeze the wrong way by your own crowd because booing is what you do to the opponent right when lebron or whoever comes into the garden you boo the hell out of them you don't want them to win that's it's it's considered a distraction it's supposed to throw them off their game it's Mm -hmm. supposed to do x y and z but when you do that when you treat your own players your own team the same way you treat every other team that's visiting Where's the benefit of playing at home? Well, That's well, my we, don't, we don't. When 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 they're playing well, we treat them like kings. You hear the MVP chants. You hear the RJ Barrett chants. I'm sure people are cheering for Fournier tonight after his terrible season. Tonight he was on. You you cheer for him when he's on. We we celebrate these these guys when they got it going. But it but but for the, the Knicks fan is very smart. They're savvy. They know the game. If if we know that you're not playing up to your potential, you're gonna hear it. These are so, some of these people are spending hundreds of dollars to come watch. Some of these people are spending hundreds of dollars on merch. They're spending hundreds of dollars on their cable bill to watch you every single night. They're invested. And we got to address about the standards of New York City, the standards of Madison Square Garden. I was there for all the Patrick Ewing games, for all the Jeremy Lane games, Oak, Mace, everything, Spreewell. I was there in the garden, up in the blues, losing my mind. Mm-hmm. We, all we expect from players here is effort. Mm-hmm. This town loved John Starks. He was bagging groceries, and mm-hmm. then he was in the NBA Finals. We still love him. Patrick Ewing didn't get the ring. He is a god in New York City. 
if you look at our starters, they did not bring it this year. It was disgraceful. Disgraziad. They were terrible. They were not interested in playing not only Knicks style of basketball, but NBA quality basketball. Mm -hmm. And it's our job as the fans. I'm sorry, Ash, but you're wrong on this one. It is our job as the fans to let them know when they play at that lower level. And we did our job here on Knicks Fan TV. We wrote Kemba, and now, then he was player of the week. <laughs> we wrote Randall and RJ. What happened? Yeah, they JJ put from Brooklyn TV. with the RJ hate got him, got him cracking the last game. Right. We had the Randall and the RJ. They put up a 60-piece together. Yeah. And then who do we do it to next? Fournier. But when we see Randall lollygagging, not paying attention, and he's our leader, that is a like serious all hands on deck situation. And he needs to know we love him, whether the ball goes in the basket or not, if he puts in the effort. And when he wasn't putting in effort, he needs to know from the fans, from New York City, mm -hmm. from his teammates, not acceptable. We're just looking for effort. Is there anybody who's a Knicks fan who cares if we win or lose as long as we put in the effort and we leave it all out there like every New Yorker does every day when they get out of bed?